nice that we've been able to have a chat because I talked about your painting and in introduced your name uh, when I last spoke on uh, face Facebook. And we weren't sure then whether um, we could get the two of us together, but it's it's really great that you are here. And thank you very much for giving up your time. And um, Ben, I should introduce you as Ben Alden, artist. Um, but uh, many congratulations on winning the People's Vote for your beautiful portrait painting, Yolanda. And I wonder whether uh, we could start by you just telling us why you painted it, how you painted it, what inspired you, uh, what you picked out is important. Um, and then maybe at the end, was Yolanda pleased with the portrait? Uh, yeah, okay, thank, yeah, thank you, Mel. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic to uh, win the votes. Um, yeah, it's my painting, Yolanda. Uh, it's a watercolor and Ganzai Tambi piece. Um, and yeah, it really came about during lockdown. Um, so during lockdown, my studio unfortunately closed um, uh, due to social distancing. So I ended up working a lot more from home. Um, and from that, I ended up, you know, using uh, what was around me to paint. And so me and Yolanda lived together. Um, so she ended up becoming the subject of my paintings. Um, and interestingly, how lockdown kind of went on, uh, so we could be social with friends. Uh, we ended up doing a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of Zoom quizzes. Um, and we had this regular Zoom quiz that was weekly. Um, and part of the idea of this was whoever was hosting the quiz would come up with a theme. Uh, and everyone would try to dress up like that theme. Um, and then the winner of that theme would get some points towards the quiz. Um, so of course, when it came to my turn, being an artist, the theme I chose was dress up like a famous artist or like in the style of a famous artwork. Uh, I, of course, went with Van Gogh with a bandaged ear and all of that. <laughs> and, uh, and Yoli, she, um, uh, she went in the style of a Gustav Klimt painting. Um, uh, we have a big- I've got behind me, Ben. Yes, you do, you do. I've, I've, got one, I've got one in the house as well, actually. Um, uh, so she put on lots of jewelry, kind of lots of shiny objects, very much, uh, lots of patterned clothing. Uh, very much in the style of his work. Um, and I thought, wow, actually, I've, I've you know, I've, I've got to do a, a painting of this. And um, so it kind of came out of that. Um, the background was much more kind of my imagination, but very much playing on those ideas of Gustav Klimt. Um, and yet there's, there's lots of kind of little elements to it in there. Uh, you mentioned the snake. This was actually from an ornament that she was wearing. Um, which I then turned into this snake-like object, again, kind of referencing back to with the Klimt imagery. Um, and we've actually got in the, you can see just on her shoulder there in the background pattern, a little bird as well. Um, and this was a robin. Again, this was a lockdown theme really coming in. Uh, for the two of us that were often at work, this was the first time we've really had uh, to spend a lot of time in our garden and really kind of get to know the garden. And uh, yeah, we had this, we had this, uh, really friendly Robin that was hanging around. So around the kind of time I was doing this painting. So I kind of worked it in in the background just into the patterns there as well. What um, what I really, well, I love this when I first saw it, not just because you're, you're here, Ben, but yeah. what I loved about it was the way that you had quite a complicated portrait in, in terms of the necklace, the hands, the snake, the clothes, the hair. Um, but you were you were really brave, and behind it, you also chose a complicated background. Yeah. But it yeah. but it works really beautifully, doesn't it? I I think so. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm 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 very interested in that kind of uh, that heavy patterned nature, actually. And it was something I was you know I was certainly playing around with in this. Um, and actually, that I mean the pattern at the top there is quite interesting. You might be able to just make out if I turn my screen behind me. We've got this uh, big painting by Dom Theobald. Um, uh, and we've got the red sofa behind me as well, which is where this piece was taken from. Um, and I kind of adapted that painting in it as well. So you can see how I played with the colors there and kind of adapted them into the painting. Um, but yeah, I, I was very, very much interested in the pattern nature of it. Um, and it was, it was uh, quite difficult trying to get a balance as well and make sure the picture balanced. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's worked quite nicely. 
Well, I, obviously our, our uh, listeners and viewers thought it did because you won the popular vote. So many congratulations. Now, you didn't aren't. I mean, I know you called her Yolly and Yolanda, yeah. but you didn't answer whether she was pleased with it. What did she think? Oh, yeah, it? yeah, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, she was. I thought. Yeah, I think. I think she's pretty happy with it, actually. Um, uh, it's the it's the first it's the first portrait I've made of Yolly, actually. Um, I'm sure there'll be more to come, but um, but it's the first one I did, and actually, it was. I mean, it was quite a long process. I started it quite early in lockdown, and. Uh, I did leave it for quite a few months because I couldn't quite get uh, the kind of resemblance I wanted to with it. Um, but uh, on a return back to it, I reworked it um, and got it how I wanted it to look. And yeah, I think I think she's pretty pleased with it. Well, you'd never realised that you'd you'd left it half finished because it look it blends so beautifully. Mm. And my my favourite, of course, is the red necklace, you know, which really balances beautifully with your your ready pink settee i i just think that's just fabulous and and it doesn't draw your eye but you can't help not noticing it can you it's just fabulous so she, i'm really pleased she liked it and very interesting that snake because you you sort of link the two hands together beautifully and mm. i don't know if the snake wasn't there maybe it, it wouldn't look as though it was so sort of cozy and warm and friendly as well which i think to me this portrait is so well and i don't know who i am to make all these comments i just i i just loved it i just loved it and oh, thank um, you. you know well 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 deserved winner now thank you've you. got um you've got another painting in the exhibition as well that was selected uh and i've got to look at this because it's a very long word hexacoralia that is it yeah hexacoralia yeah. Oh, um and, and I, I would encourage uh, uh, listeners to go on the site and have a look at that painting. But um, would you mind just describing that one, uh, Ben? I know we won't see it on screen, but could you just talk about it a bit? Yeah, certainly. Um, so Hexacoralia, it's, it's certainly quite a different one for me. I'm usually more of a portrait artist and a figurative artist. Um, so I guess, it, I guess it's essentially more of a landscape piece, but it's quite a close cropped landscape and it's underwater. Um, so you're following a rock line down, and on this rock line you've got lots of sea and enemies as well. Um, it's quite a vibrant colour, I think, in it. Um, so you've got all the different colours coming out of the uh, sea and enemies, uh, kind of forming this composition. Um, yeah, yeah. Does that describe? I, I thought it. I thought it was charming. It it wasn't overstated, overdone. It was just beautiful, and and I did recognise the anemones, and I just. Um, I, I just I don't know it was it to me it was a very peaceful painting I don't know if that was your intention um yeah I, I do I do feel it's quite a peaceful piece um I mean I certainly wanted the composition to feel quite peaceful in it mm. um and I I mean I think it maybe does I hope it does that um and certainly by the nature of that kind of slow moving water over them and their kind of uh, kind of slow movement of their kind of tentacles and such um does kind of bring about that nice calm nature I think and the two of the two paintings, Yolanda and um, I'm going to have to look at it again. Hexa Coralia. <laughs> um, they sit really nicely together, don't they? You know, on the on the exhibition site, I think they look lovely together. Yeah, I think they do. I mean, both you know, both quite wildly different things, but I think colour wise, they match quite nicely as well. And um, yeah, it was kind of you know, I hadn't really placed them together before the exhibition, but actually, I think together they actually work quite nicely. Yeah, they do. So, Ben, for, for listeners out there that, you know, may be wanting some of your ideas and tips and techniques that you use, can you just describe very quickly your uh, your art journey? You know, what got you into art? Um, what the art that you're doing now is that is that has it always been like that or have you changed? And secondly, I wonder whether you could just run through very quickly um, your your sort of process when you decide to do a, a painting, what's your process? What do you, what do you regard as really crucial? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so my art journey, I mean, it's you know, it's been one of these things that I've always been painting. Um, I've grown up in a very artistic family. Uh, my mum has been painting. My sister is a painter and musician. Okay. Um, so it's always kind of there from childhood. But I studied uh, at Norwich School of Art and Design. Studied fine art painting there. Uh, graduating in two thousand and eleven. Uh, and since then, I've had a studio in Norwich, and uh, I've been kind of painting ever since. 
Um, and I've been working in the arts as well. So I'm uh, a technician for East Gallery at Norwich University of the Arts. Um, so I hang a lot of art shows as well. So it's all kind of ties in and linked together. Um, for the majority of this time, I've been an oil painter. Um, so it's only really recently, the last couple of years, I'd say, I think it's just over three years uh, that I've picked up watercolour paints. Um, and that came very much about from uh, a time when one of my studios closed and I was in between studios and I had to work from home and I didn't want to bring the kind of corrosiveness of oil paints back to the house mm -hmm. of turpentine and <laughs> and I, I picked up, yeah, I picked up a new painting medium, which I never had before, which was watercolour. Um, and I fell in love with it and I've been doing watercolours uh, as much, if not more, than oil painting ever since. Um, and so my process, I guess, really does derive from my kind of uh, initial practice as an oil painter. I maybe come at it uh, a bit more heavy handed, maybe, than a lot of watercolourists would um, when I paint. Um, sometimes I do use uh, kind of a gouache, a white gouache to kind of help embolden colours as well. Um, but generally when I paint, I start off making a sketch rather than using a pencil, I'll sketch straight onto the paper using uh, a kind of a, a kind of very watery burnt sienna. And I find that's my best way to kind of form composition and figure out where I'm going. Um, and from that, I just slowly build up throughout the work. Gosh, well, it's it's really interesting that you've, you know, moved, well, that you're able to easily move away from, from oils to watercolour and what what do you do, do how do the two mediums sort of oh you know how in, in your head how do they sort of go together or how are they do they sort of clash in your head when you're painting do, could you move easily from a watercolour to an oil you know or do you really have to sort of leave yourself some space between the two uh, media that you paint with the mediums that you paint with um, I think I think so to a degree, um, maybe. Um, I mean, you know, the oils can be more forgiving in some ways that they have a very slow drying time and uh, mistakes are much more easier to uh, work <laughs> over in oil painting. So uh, I, I would say, you know, watercolour in many respects, I think can be a much harder medium. Um, and maybe there has to be a bit more forethought when you uh, work in watercolours. Um, to what you're doing before you place any colour down. Um, but I do find generally I can kind of mix between the two quite easily. Um, when it kind of comes to the other aspects of painting, you know, com composition, colour, things like that, they they share all those same boundaries. Um, so it is just that kind of uh, brush technique is the only real difference. Mm. Um, but I think, I think somewhat you can bring the same technique to both paintings, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that that I think that's really reassuring. I mean, I I I'm a water watercolorist, and I have never used oils, but I I do love oil paintings, and uh, so you know, I think it gives gives us confidence to try different medium. Yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's always um good to try all the different paint mediums um because they can all really achieve quite different things. But um, but yeah, I mean, watercolor is kind of my uh. My fascination at the moment which is great. I mean like the Royal Institute of Painters in Watercolour and the Royal Watercolour Society, um, our society does allow um, you know water-based medium for example um, liquid charcoal, inks, gouache, um, acrylics in a very very watery form and um, you know I know quite a few watercolourists do do like to use different um, mm. You know, add the different media to to their their watercolor. Although we've got other artists that just want to paint in pure watercolor, so there's quite a mixture um, in the society. And Ben, I know that you're not a, a member of the society, or indeed a, a friend of the society. What what um what art what societies do you currently belong? Because I know that there's a lot of art going on in Norwich, isn't there? There is a lot of art going on in Norwich. I'm not actually a member of any societies at the moment, but um, uh, but there are some fantastic groups in Norwich and I have exhibited with some of them. Um, uh, but yeah, there is a lot of art going on. So uh, some of the ones I really like, there's TBA Collective in Norwich, which has got some members from the art school in it, which is a fantastic collective of uh, artists. 
uh, Emrian Art often put on great exhibitions as well. And there's so many great venues in Norwich as well for art as well. Well, it's great that you've uh, submitted for us this time. And, uh, you know, society does cover Norfolk, Suffolk, Cambridgeshire, uh, Bedfordshire and um, Essex. So it's quite a wide catchment mm. area for artists. But it's really, really good that this this time round you spotted us and, and put in two marvellous paintings. And thank you so much, Ben. And, uh, you know, it would be lovely to keep in touch with you somehow. And we've got many artists in Norfolk and I'm sure that they'd be very interested in hearing what you've just um, said. Ben, is there anything else that I haven't asked you or covered that you'd like to say? No, I think I think that I think that's covered it quite well. I mean, if people want to see more of my artwork, they can head to benolden.co.uk. Um, if people have Instagram, they can go to at Benjamin Olden Art, and I've got a lot of my more current pieces on there, uh, which is a nice mix of watercolour and oil pieces on there, so you can kind of see how I've actually worked in both mediums. Um, and of course, thank you to all the people that did vote. Um, and yeah, all the other artworks on there. There's some fantastic artworks. Um, uh, there were some beautiful ones. I mean, some of yours, Mel, were fantastic. Um, <laughs> thank you. They were there was, you don't uh, have to say that, Ben. There, well, there, there was, what is it? There was the, my dad, my dad's shed. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Fantastic piece. Uh, Leslie, Leslie Monroe's pieces. I really liked Rosalind Ridley's piece, mm -hmm. Guild Labourer. Um, yes, yeah, so some lovely works. Um, and yeah, I very much hope to be more involved with the society. Hopefully I can maybe look at becoming a member in some uh, form in the future. Well, thank you very much. Our next exhibition is at, um, well, hopefully if we can have it, our next physical exhibition is in Wales Next to the Sea at the Maltings Gallery. Um, and, you know, we hope that the COVID situation will be such that we can safely, applying all the restrictions that we need to, um, have a physical exhibition as well as an online one. So. Ben, thank you so much for taking part in this uh, interview and all the best and best wishes to Yolanda too. Really, my bye pleasure. Bye. bye.